Hello guys and welcome to another video. After three months of posting with my other backdrop, I am back to my original backdrop. And that is because today we are celebrating my YouTube anniversary. Yep, thank you, thank you. Round of applause for me. It's actually my fourth year on YouTube. I feel old. Today's not the anniversary. It was actually last week, but I forgot with all the Percy Jackson news. So we're celebrating today. I'm gonna say that counts. Today we're reacting to my first ever videos on BookTube. I can't believe it's been almost four years Years exactly since Rick Riordan announced that a Percy Jackson TV show was in the works. Because yes, that's exactly the reason why I created my channel. As soon as he announced it, I was like, this is interesting. This is very, very interesting. I created my channel and I made a video. I made a very, very bad video talking about what things Rick Riordan and Disney Plus couldn't change about The Lightning Thief. Are you ready to walk down memory lane with me? Because I will need emotional support for this journey. Fun fact, this is also coinciding with me probably reaching 17,000 subscribers. We're not there yet as of the filming of this video. <laughs> way to go me. Way to go us. Us. Obviously, this is an us thing. In case you don't know, this is my channel. Let's look up the oldest videos. <sighs> oh my goodness. Look at us. Look at us. How far we have come. Hey, look at us. Look at us. Huh? Who would have thought? Not me. The fact that these videos have over a thousand views each is astounding to me. And I'm just very thankful for all you OG subscribers who saw these thumbnails and they were like, click, give me more of that. So without further ado, let's watch the first video where I appear on screen. It has 2000 views. I am afraid, but it's okay guys. I'm criticizing myself as someone who knows that I've grown as a creator. Look, she's got ads. Me, when I posted this, could never dream of that. Oh my goodness, is this the worst? shot in the history of cinema. It's not cinema, but to me it is. <laughs> this is from the archives, full sun hitting me from the side. I had my glasses on, which I don't do anymore because the shine is just too distracting for me, at least when I'm editing. My background <laughs> is not it. I'm very happy with where it is today. I really enjoy watching my older videos and enjoy seeing how it has changed. This Good, that, terrible. Let's hear what she has to say. This is called Disney Plus Can't Touch This Percy Jackson Adaptation. I'm pretty sure Disney Plus did touch it in the new Percy Jackson adaptation. I did like my hair though. Is diversity and representation. Okay, they definitely got that right, so she would be happy. Rick Riordan is known for including a lot of diversity in his characters all throughout the books. And although in his first series, since she's so cute the way she talks, Percy Jackson and the Olympians, there is not as much representation and diversity as much there will be in the books to come. The editing. Also, if we get a camp half blood filled with only white campers, I will be furious. We definitely did it. There was a lot of variety initially, so that's good. The gods mingle with any kind of mortal in the US, so it would not make sense if all of the campers were white. All my expressions. A uh, representation oh, for uh. people of color, there's also, uh, some oh. characters that uh, belong to the LGBTQI plus collective and they are so Ooh, that wasn't too bad, that editing. Stories are very important, if not in the first series, then in later books. We definitely don't have that much diversity in that way yet. We will get it later on. I know a lot of people are worried about the that kind of representation because it is Disney, but in some of its latest shows, uh, Disney Plus has been known to include I will never defend Disney Plus again <laughs> or any like big platform, especially Disney talking about LGBTQ rights. Included, but not limited to High School Musical, the musical, the series. If they do not include any kind of representation or diversity, the fans will riot. They will. Oh my god, that, oh, terrible. If there's an epic quest, there has to be epic action. Ooh, okay, she would not be too happy with where the show was. Because we are supposed to believe that these kids, these teenagers, know how to fight using swords, knives, bows and arrows, and also they have to sell Percy's powers. I feel like they did that correctly. There just wasn't enough fighting, enough action, and it was very short. Because they're very central to the story. <laughs> and speaking of Percy's powers, they're... They could be visually similar to waterbending in Avatar The Last Airbender. I didn't actually like the waterbending that much in the new adaptation. Oh, she didn't even know what was coming. Which is also getting a new adaptation later this year. 
they did not look alike at all. And the special effects did not look alike a lot, which is very weird because it's like the same concept. It'll be curious to see if these two shows look alike visually, if their special effects have anything to do with one another. So when both of them come out, we'll have to see. And if they'll try to go for different styles in order to differentiate the two shows visually. I don't think the two shows are even competing at all, even though they came out like a month apart. None of the actors have talked about the other show, which is weird because it's a waterbender. <laughs> That's the premise. You bend water, you, you have powers. So they're pretty similar. Similar demographics, similar ages of the characters. But I feel like nobody's talking about them together. All in mm -hmm. all, action is very important in Percy Jackson. It is. There's always an epic fight scene in... Number one, we need actors, or at least stunt doubles, who can sell a good performance. And number two, we desperately need good special effects. Okay, I think the performance was good. We just need better scripts with more action and maybe different directing. Number three is their lightheartedness and their humor. Wow, which she's like reading off a script. As we all know was missing in the movie adaptation. That's facts, just facts. So a lot of the humor comes with the chapter titles and it would be fun to see them incorporated as episode titles. We did! Way to go, good prediction. Also, a lot of the humor comes from Percy inner dialogue. Narration. So they could try to incorporate some narration. And they did. At the beginning of the episodes. Not a lot, but definitely in the first one and the last one. Speaking of narration, if the first episode of the series doesn't start with Percy saying, look, I didn't want to be a half-blood, I'll be honestly devastated. I wasn't because it did. Oh, she's so good. But if they don't want narration, there are other ways to include Percy's humor, such as incorporating the humor into their normal dialogue. Why does she talk so slowly? It's getting on my nerves. All in all, it is very important to include Percy's and Rick Riordan's humor. Rick Riordan. That's the way I said his name before people started bullying me in the comments. I'm sorry. In Spain, we call him Rick Riordan. Now you're like, it's Rick Riordan. Okay, don't come for me because I really don't care, but I'm trying, okay? Sometimes I just slip. I didn't know it back then. Percy's and Rick Riordan's humor. Rick Riordan. Rick Riordan has a very specific humor. He does. And it's what gives it this series its heart. This is a terrible angle for you. I read this series for the first time when I was in ninth <gasps> grade and I could not stop laughing. It's true. And that's happened to me every single time I've reread it. Mm -hmm. Why is she so <laughs> serious? I've reread it. So the show has to be funny. It has to be funny. It wasn't that funny. I'm looking forward to season two. The series has to deal with serious or dark subject matter. She's getting serious because we're talking about serious topics. Because although Percy Jackson is a middle grade series, it, is. it deals People with- People forget that. Darker subject matter than you would imagine. Yeah. It deals with things from running away because you feel unsafe in your own house. Damn. With absentee parents, mm. with abusive or toxic relationships. Yeah, heavy stuff. Or actual character deaths. Yeah, not yet, but it's coming. And this mixed in with the lightheartedness is what makes Percy Jackson work so well. Perfect blend. Because it is a middle grade series. She's so right for this. But it never dumps down the content for mm. its readers. Yeah. I think Rick Riordan, Riordan is the master of striking the perfect balance between lighthearted and treating dark subject matter, which is also important. Mm -hmm. for young readers to know about. And I think Rick has always done a good job at trusting Why am I so his serious? audience and not I'm dumbing also... down whoa, his whoa, 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 whoa. So... Okay, that transition. In case you're wondering why I'm speaking so low in this video, why I, it sounds like I'm whispering and I'm so like monotone the whole way through and I'm not very excited as I talk about something that I'm clearly passionate about, it's because uh, no one in my family knew that I had a YouTube channel. So if they heard me talking to myself, they would either A, think I'm FaceTiming one of my American friends, or B, think I'm insane. It was just embarrassing. I'm still a bit embarrassed anytime my parents tell people that I have a YouTube channel, or as they call it, my blog with a B, yes. But way back then, it was even more embarrassing because how many subscribers did I have? Like, minus one. When I posted this and the other video that I'm gonna show later, I didn't have any subscribers. So I was literally just throwing these videos out into the void and I had to whisper because I didn't want to alert anyone in my family. That's why, and you're wondering, let's see, let's see the outro. Oh, so, there you have it. Those are four things that Disney yep. Plus cannot touch. 
in the new Percy Jackson live action adaptation because so if it is, about it. it'll simply not be a good Percy Jackson adaptation. So I hope you sorry, liked this video sorry. and please leave a comment down below if you have any more thoughts in what Disney Plus cannot touch in the new adaptation. She didn't even know how to do the ending. Now I have it down so well that I just do it in like 30 seconds without thinking. This video has nine comments, so let's check them out. I swear if they don't make Nico crush on Percy semi-noticeable, the fans will have a riot and I will be leading it. Like, it can't be too obvious, but it has to be there. I agree. Yeah, just yes, this person is right. Yes, I totally agree with all of these. That's so nice of you to say. Hmm, I feel like they should add more diversity within the first season. You got what you wanted, especially with the extras and supporting characters. That's, yeah, they did that. Heroes of Olympus was amazing with this, but PTO, eh. Hopefully it won't take 12 children of Poseidon to move a fishbowl sized ball of water. No shade at the movie, yes. A hundred percent shade at the movie. We always shade and roast that movie in this channel. But yeah, that's it. It's always so interesting to me to go back to my oldest videos and scroll through them and I'm always like, mm. After posting this second video where I showed my face, I didn't show my face again until I did the sorting Percy Jackson characters controversial video and then my King Chronicles Netflix adaptation video, which was my first one to go viral. So let's move on to the very first video that I did where you cannot see my face. Hello everyone and welcome to my first Percy Jackson video. Today we will be discussing the very exciting announcement of a new Percy Jackson adaptation. I want to focus on the three main characters. Uh, there are a lot of wow. other characters Thank that you. are very yes. important to the so story. Yes, so many characters that are important and irrelevant to season one. Their looks and Makes personality. Sense. But for this video, I wanted to focus on Percy, Annabeth, and Robert. Obviously. So first of all, Percy Jackson. Let's just stop you right there, old unclaimed. I don't think I was even called unclaimed when I uploaded this video. You can clearly see that I was like, look, personality. Two different things. I think the personality, we got most of them right in the show. However, look-wise, the skater look and the probably vans are right. Anaclysmus, correct. Medium height for his age, yes. A little bit of a tan. Not necessarily, especially in that episode where he's like, he has been poisoned and he's dying. So actually, not too bad. We're only missing black hair and green eyes. Because I would say he's sarcastic, frustrated, loyal. He loves his mom, not afraid to stand up for himself or others. He hates bullies. He's an outsider. And uh, he's surprisingly witty and resourceful. Yeah, very surprisingly resourceful, uh, specifically. But let's hear her talk about the look. So to start off, his look ha is very iconic. He has it is. black hair, which is described mm -hmm. all throughout the book as messy and wow. always looking as Love it. if he just came back from a walk in the beach. That's he also true. has green eyes, which mm -hmm. is important, but if they don't get a natural with green eyes, it wouldn't be the end of the world. They can always uh, put some contacts on it. They did it. And but I'm so proud that I was so open-minded even back then. <laughs> Guys, you don't understand. I was the most close-minded person about casting. I love books and I'm very passionate about things. So if something from a book adaptation like then uh, wasn't 100% correct, I just I just lost my shit. But I'm just so happy to see my character development, not only throughout my whole life, but even in the last four years. I love to see it. Okay, let's skip over to what I said about Annabeth. Oh, oh my god, green. she has so many things in look. She has, of course, blonde hair, mm -hmm. which is curly, and Percy describes it as princess curls. curls. She has gray eyes. Okay, so a lot of things about Annabeth changed. I mean, she does have curly hair, so we got that right, even though she wears it in braids. Then she also has an intimidating stare. Yes, I would think that is 100% correct. Athletic build, a couple of inches taller than Percy. This isn't true until the third book, so I'll give them a pass, and it's never going to be true ever again. Have you seen Walker? That's It's impossible for Leah to surpass him. She doesn't wear a ponytail in the show, but she does wear two ponytails in Capture the Flag, and her hair is always out of her face, so I will count that. Blue New York Yankees cap, we got that. Camp Hamlet shirt, yes, California girl look. I don't know, I guess... Yeah, what do girls in California look like? That's my question as a European. Tan, definitely. <laughs> Necklace, yes, plus her father's ring, check, check. The knife look gave her. Okay, so honestly, the only things that we're missing are the height, but that's impossible. Blonde hair and gray eyes. So I wouldn't say, you know, not too bad. Like the vibes are definitely there. She's stubborn, she's very smart, obsessed with architecture. I have to say we honestly didn't get it that much in this book, but maybe we're getting it in future books, specifically the second one when we get the, the sirens scene. But she did geek out when they went to the St. Louis arc. The 
then excessive pride we definitely got that finds it hard to trust people yes we we we, we got that independent need to prove herself witty and resourceful so i feel like old me can rest assured we got all the personality traits Okay, we're missing a couple of key components, but it's okay, we're over it. And Leah did a great job, so we're happy with the outcome. Okay, good. Let's move on to Grover. Who is such an underappreciated character, in my opinion. It's funny that I said that because I didn't really love him that much back then. It took me a 10th reread of the series and watching the show for me to be like, oh my god, I love Grover. And I feel like Chalice of the Gods was a very big part in that because he was just... He stole the show in Chalice of the Gods, and Chalice of the Gods is a Persebeth book, so it, that's hard to do, but he still did it. Let's see what I have to say about Grover. Okay, let's start with this look. He is described as having a hint of acne. He didn't have that. He looks older than the kids in their class because he's actually about twice their age. So this is something that they did right. They cast someone who was older than the other two in the trio, so that he's always going to look like a little bit older. So, Percy definitely no goatee in season one. I wonder if they'll make him have a goatee later on. Important that it's long enough to hide his horns, which he also hides in a hat most of the time. He did not have a hat, but also he showed his goat legs for most of the time. So I feel like just the mist in the show is stronger than the one in the books. Because he didn't hide his lower body. He didn't hide the lower half of his body or his little tiny little horns that much. He also has some facial hair, which also makes him look older than the rest of the cast. He didn't have his pipe pipes is that what you call them i need them i i want him to do toxic by britney spears and his pipe pipes did he have them in his first book i feel like he did he just didn't know a lot of songs by book five they're very useful and it's his main way to participate in a fight so i'm wondering if they just won't give them to him ever i hope that they do i don't think there's a skin color specified for his character which i find very interesting so i don't know what they're gonna do with that that's true they never specified his skin color he also obviously has hairy goat legs because he's a satyr and he walks weird because he's wearing fake feet and his shoes don't fit right. That's true, he did the goat walk really well. Okay, here we go, let's see. Hint of acne, no, looks older than kids in their class, I would say yes. Brown curly hair, yes. Hat, no. Some facial hair, no, not really, but that makes sense because Arian isn't actually double their age, he's just like three years older, I believe. We got the hairy goat legs, the walk's weird, and the crutches, so that's good. Personality-wise, Shy finds it hard to step up for himself, pacifist. I feel like pacifist, yes, he definitely didn't want to intervene too much between Percy and Annabeth. He just wanted things to like be in perfect harmony. He didn't find it too hard to step up for himself. The moments that he didn't was because he didn't want to draw attention to himself and to Percy and to get them in trouble in school. In Camp Half-Blood, he stepped up for himself a lot and he even went against Dionysus and his wishes. So I think that that's a very big change that they made to his character. He is a nature lover. He can't play two songs on one pipes, classical or Britney Spears. He needs to prove his own worth. I feel like that's true because his story is still like, oh my god, I f***ed up with Talia. Let me make up for it. He underestimates himself a little bit, but I wouldn't say that that's one of his main characteristics. Very loyal, true, not very brave, is brave for his friends. I feel like he isn't very brave in comparison to Annabeth or Percy because they're very, very brave. But still, compared to any other human alive, I think he's brave in comparison. He's just like, he just hangs out with really, really brave people. But yeah, I think Grover is probably the one that has changed more, main characteristic wise. That was very embarrassing, but honestly, the editing wasn't half as bad as I expected it to be. Probably because that first video that I reacted to, the second video that I ever posted was very simple and I was talking so slowly that it was very easy to edit between pauses. Now I talk so quickly and sometimes I ramble, ramble, ramble that it's hard to like cut between sentences because I, I everything, all the syllables merged together. It was very hard for me to hold eye contact with the camera, but it's interesting also to see how my relationship with the camera has developed over the years because now I'm very comfortable saying stupid shit in front of the camera and looking directly at you and not being like, or looking like this or looking away when I'm talking and being like, okay, so Percy Jackson. Okay, Stitch, it's not the time to jump. Okay, go back. Oh my God got it. Way back when, when I first posted it, I wasn't expecting to keep posting videos. I just wanted to make that first one to make it clear what I wanted to see from the show. But then we got the King Chronicles Netflix news and I just got like hooked on making videos. I was like, okay, I can share my thoughts with people 
who like the same thing. So I'll just keep doing it. And I keep in mind that I posted that in May. And then in October or September, I started to be consistent with when I posted videos and actually doing them like every week. And I started posting three videos every week. Granted, they were like eight minute videos at most, but I still did that. And when I got burnt out of doing that, I think the next summer I started posting videos twice a week. And then we got to this schedule of once a week once I started my master's degree. But it's interesting to see how I posted videos from May to December and I had I think 200 subscribers at most after posting 20, 30, maybe 40 videos. And then I posted a video of me ranking every single ship in the Rick Riordan universe. And I wouldn't say it was overnight, but over the next month, I got so many new subscribers. I think I went from 200 to 3000 in like two months. And then my next big jump was actually when Percy was cast. It was the first time that I posted a video, quick reaction, went to sleep, and then I woke up with 10,000 views. That had never happened before. And I was like, this is insane. And that got me, I think, from 3,000 to 9,000 in like the next couple of months, which was super quick. And I was like, this is insane. But I'm so happy that we've been in this journey together. So please leave a like if you like this video. Comment down below when you joined the Unclaimed Demigod family. Like, what tier were you in? Were you before the thousand? Before the ten thousand? When? I really hope that when this video is out, we've reached seventeen thousand, but uh, fingers crossed. Subscribe if you haven't already, if you want to get me to our next milestone, eighteen thousand. And make sure to click that bell button so you never miss any of my videos. I post videos just like this every single Friday, and I guess I'll see you guys next time. Bye!